Aloha and welcome everybody to This Is Now inside the Digital Center here at h and I'm alongside Ashley, filling in for Jonathan actually as he's taking a little time off and we want to get right to the COVID numbers up above 1,000 unfortunately again, Ash, right? That's right. The state is reporting 1,068 new COVID infections today and four more fatalities. Today's count includes some of the infections not reported yesterday because of an interruption with the lab reporting system, so it is a partial count. The breakdown of cases by island shows 724 on Oahu, 169 on the Big Island, 128 on Maui, 39 on Kauai, and 8 out of state. Now, the latest fatalities are two Oahu residents, a woman in her 50s and a man in his 70s, a Maui man in his 30s, and a Big Island man in his 60s. This comes as officials in Hawaii and across the nation are struggling to combat this wave of COVID misinformation spreading across the web. Ben Gutierrez reports. Public health experts and government officials say they're being hobbled in their efforts to fight the spread of COVID by opponents spreading misinformation. I do think that misinformation has played a big part of the crisis we're in right now in our community. Hawaii COVID committee member Senator Jared Kioho Kalole says the state is trying to connect more with skeptics to win the public's trust. But on social media, that appears to be a monumental task. This Instagram page used to post funny Hawaii videos. Now it's almost all anti-vaccine messages. Its creator told us he's pro-choice and doesn't trust the government. You don't want to talk to your constituents? Neither does the man who confronted the lieutenant governor, claiming the state is lying about COVID statistics. His Instagram page has nearly 3,500 followers, even though he was accused of inflating his medical credentials. And right now, in a lot of social media algorithms, for example, you're not exposed to all sides of the information, right? UH Communicology professor Amy Hubbard says often social media leads down a one-sided rabbit hole. If I click on something that, oh, I'm interested in, I'm not sure, oh, that sounds provocative, that sounds kind of juicy, and I click on it, what will happen then is that I'm more likely to get information like that. Why some people believe their friends more than doctors was the subject of a major World Health Organization study. The survey found more than a third of social media users were apathetic to false information instead of challenging it. The 13 million followers of podcaster Joe Rogan found out that he's now infected and taking the horseworm medicine ivermectin, which the CDC has warned against. In San Diego, one lawmaker is trying to get COVID misinformation declared as a public health crisis. We have to say what we have an obligation to say, which is these statements are dangerous. Uh, they are untrue and they will hurt your health. It's an age giving new relevance to the old adage, just because you heard something doesn't mean it's true. Or we might be thinking it's truthful and we want you to believe it too and that's why we're sharing it. And now it's coming from a source who we might like. Hubbard also says that fear and anxiety are also playing a big part. Ben Gutierrez, Hawaii News Now. The FDA has scheduled a key meeting on booster shots. The agency's independent advisors will meet on September 17th to review Pfizer's vaccine data and decide whether to recommend a third shot for people 16 and older. The White House is hoping to start administering booster shots by September 20th. For now, this only applies to the Pfizer vaccine. Moderna submitted its booster application to the FDA yesterday. Since the beginning of last month, seven people have been busted trying to use fake vaccination cards to enter the state of Hawaii. The latest include Maurice Beavers and Aalaya Sharif of Georgia and Chloe Morazak of Illinois, who was released from OCCC today after spending five days in jail. Fraud is easy with this type of document. So we then have put into place measures to ensure that we can verify it and that we can uh, uh, prosecute them when they are fraudulently altered. If convicted, all seven face up to a year in jail and a $5,000 fine. We've learned hundreds of Oahu first responders are seeking exemptions to the city's strict vaccine mandate based on religious or medical grounds. 
The city hasn't released official numbers, but our sources tell us about 270 HPD employees don't want the shots. That's out of 2,500 total. And about 100 fire department employees are seeking exemptions out of more than 1,100. Still no word on how many paramedics, EMTs, and lifeguards are unvaccinated. Police commissioners were told that 37 HPD officers are currently out, either with COVID or quarantined. Where would we have to get in terms of numbers for operations to be impacted? From a patrol standpoint, maybe about 25, 30, maybe per district would start affecting operations. The other counties are allowing workers to take weekly tests if they're not vaccinated. U.S. jobless claims have dropped to 340,000. That's a pandemic low. Federal unemployment benefits will end this weekend. Before the deadline hits, the state's Labor Department is trying to make sure that people who are unemployed are aware of the next steps they can take. People who want to keep getting unemployment benefits will need to file new claims. To see if you're eligible to make another claim, head to hawaiiunemploymentinfo.com. The abortion fight in Texas intensified overnight after the U.S. Supreme Court refused to block the state's new restrictive law that bans the procedure six weeks into pregnancy. Skylar Henry has more. In a 5-4 decision, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to block what's now the most restrictive abortion legislation in the country. Texas law SB 8 essentially bans abortions for women as early as six weeks into pregnancy, which is before many women realize they're pregnant. It also allows any private citizen to sue anyone who helps a woman get an abortion. In her dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor called the order a breathtaking act of defiance of the Constitution. There is now a conservative block on the court that is looking to overturn Roe. American University professor Jessica Waters says the court's refusal to act could embolden other states to pass similar laws to challenge the 1973 landmark Roe v. Wade decision. We are returning to a time where access to safe abortion care is going to depend on where you live and how much money you have. Meanwhile, Texas anti-abortion groups are praising the court's decision. With this bill, we do hope to see an end to abortion. The president has called on Congress to act. Thursday, Speaker Nancy Pelosi said the House will take up the Women's Health Protection Act, a bill that protects access to abortions when members return later this month. We have heard for decades that this day would come. This day is here and we have to respond. Texas Congresswoman Lizzie Fletcher, a co-sponsor of the House bill, says for too long, abortion rights advocates have relied too much on the courts. This should force everybody to act now. It's gonna have tragic consequences for families across Texas. President Biden has directed his administration to look into what legal tools it has to counter the Texas law. The rain has cleared, but the remnants of Ida are now becoming visible. Two dozen people were killed in the northeast, and many are still dealing with tornado and flooding damage. Our Lacey Denise has more. Nearly two dozen people are dead after the remnants of Hurricane Ida slammed the northeast. Officials declared a state of emergency as deadly floods hit New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. A flashlight emergency was issued for New York City for the first time ever. Subway service was suspended in New York overnight. Conditions are so dangerous that officials ordered a travel ban for all non-emergency vehicles. Central Park set a new record overnight with more than three inches of rain in just one hour. And what's so fascinating is that the records that were broken in Central Park, for example, 3.15 inches in one hour, it broke a record literally set one week earlier. That says to me, that there are more, no more cataclysmic, unforeseeable events. We need to foresee these in advance and be prepared. Global warming is upon us. When you get two record rainfalls in a week, it's not just coincidence. When you get all the changes that we have seen in weather, that's not a coincidence. Global warming is upon us, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. We are in a whole new world now. Let's be blunt about it. We saw a horrifying storm last night, unlike anything we have seen before. And this is a reality we have to face. President Biden says he's directed the Pentagon, the FAA and Department of Homeland Security to use satellite imagery and drones to survey areas hit hardest by Ida. For This Is Now, I'm Lacey Denise. The winds fueling the massive Caldor fire in California may ease in the coming days, but officials say the tourist destination of South Lake Tahoe remains in danger as the fire makes its way toward the Nevada border. 
Firefighters are making some progress in taming the blaze, which has scorched more than 210,000 acres as of this morning. The three, two, one. The fire is about 25% contained. Fire officials say they're working to keep flames out of urban communities and residents are being asked to turn off their hoses and irrigation systems to save water for the firefight. More than 20,000 Afghans who fled their home country are now in the U.S. and an estimated 40,000 are at bases overseas and they could soon be on their way. Natalie Brandt has more. Afghan families arriving into the U.S. carried what little they were able to take with them as they fled their home country. These are people who are interpreters and who worked in other capacities with the U.S. government and whose lives were in danger. Sasha Chanoff is executive director of Refuge Point, one of the groups helping with resettlement efforts. Right now, the U.S. government is building capacity at eight U.S. military bases across the country to eventually house up to 50,000 evacuees. There are people who come to this country, American citizens and others, who have family members who may not go to those military bases, U.S. citizens, of course, who may not go to those bases, and those bases are meant to be ter temporary regardless. The federal government, working with state and local leaders and the private sector, will help the refugees find more permanent places to live. We have homes ready for about 34,000 of those people. There's still 16,000 homes that we need to find in the U.S. right now. Adding to the urgency, the number of children who were separated from their families during the chaotic evacuation. We're deploying staff now to work with unaccompanied children and others in places across the world so that they can reunite with families. And many Afghan allies are still trying to flee the Taliban. A senior State Department official estimates a majority of individuals who qualify for special immigrant visas have not yet made it out. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. A man who allegedly tried to steal an air ambulance plane has been ordered to a medical... Three a man who allegedly tried to steal an air ambulance plane has been ordered to take a mental exam. Police say Gabriel Molina told them he was, quote, fearless and that Mother Earth was driving the car that he crashed through the airport fence. He's accused of starting the plane but never pressing the gas. Molina's next hearing is set for late October. A new law now in effect on Maui finds property owners when underage drinkers are busted on their property. The law's supporters tell us it's a long time coming in a county where the CDC says about 15 percent of minors admit to binge drinking. That's above state and national averages. In Maui, they have really high rates of drinking and binge drinking. And, you know, if if we bring it down to a personal level, I think that we can all think of somebody who has been affected. They're going to be issued a citation that's going to come in the mail and it will be um, a fine um, that is paid if police come to the, to the gathering and find that there is underage drinking on that property. It's $200 for the first violation, $500 for the second, and $1,000 for the third. And our own Billy V was out at Iolani Palace this morning learning about all they have going on and an important change for those that want to come visit. Thank you very much. We're getting an opportunity to talk story with Paul O'Connell, who's the executive director of the Friends of Iolani Palace on this day where we begin Hawaiian History Month and we celebrate the birth date of our Queen Liliu Kalani. Mm, yes, we celebrate her birthday. Um, Manawahine. Phenomenal lady um, who cared about her people and her country and her aina. And so we're excited here, obviously, so much history here um, with our queen. We have these beautiful project um, Mo'i cards that are available free uh, at our gift shop and at actually 280-something places across Hawaii, the continent, and internationally that were put together by Project Mo'i. And it really gives you a little... Um, hint of some of the wonderful things that she's done. The last time that we talked a couple of months ago, it was everything was reopening and you were asking people to come and support the palace. Did they answer the call? You answered the call. Yes, um, Hawaii answered the call and we were so happy to see so many of our people coming in here and, and visiting and so many people saying it was the first time that either the first time they'd ever been to the palace or they hadn't been there since fourth grade when it was really an empty room you know that you came to look at and some of the kupuna talking about when they came when their kupuna worked here as a legislature so 
really interesting stories that came out and we're so happy people came they became members they've made donations and so um, we just want to say mahalo um, as far as people coming to actually visit here things are changing now either you're going to have to have you're going to have to have your id but uh, either a vaccination is completed or a negative covid test correct are you ready for that we're getting ready. Um, we're waiting for a few more guidelines um, from the city on that. But um, what will happen is when you come to pick up your ticket at the barracks and you normally take a temperature there, there's actually going to be someone there and you'll present them your ID card and your vaccination card or, or the electronic version of your vaccination card um, or your negative COVID test. Um, that's within 48 hours of visiting and that'll be documented and, and then you'll get your um, your sticker and you'll be good to go. I know that you have a lot of things coming up and I'm wondering if all of these things are on the website like the Ron Williams Lilio Kalani project, uh, your partnership with Hawaiian Legacy Reforestation Initiative, is that all there? So the Ron Williams project's not on our website. Um, what that is, Project Mo'i, are these wonderful cards that share information about the Queen and today you can come down to the palace into our gift shop and get one for free and they're great cards to share with your family or to send to family. Um, so please, please come down. I think you can look under Project Mo'i um, on their, it's either their Instagram or their website and find the other places, hundreds of places here that are offering all these free cards as well. And, and that's just a service to the community that they're doing and we're just happy to be part of it. Our Hawaiian Legacy Partnership, you'll find on our website. That one has been phenomenal because it's, um, we receive the donations um, at the Friends of Iolani Palace when you purchase a very special Milo tree and that has so much history um, behind the Milo tree itself. And then the tree, you can either take it home and plant it in your home, in your garden, um, or it'll be planted and you'll receive a certificate. And so it not only helps us, but it helps the Aina. You know, it's, it's really um, part of taking care of our Aina. Yolani Palace, not only helping to take care of our Aina, but this wonderful place where our monarchy lived and reigned and, of course, waiting for you. From Yolani Palace, I'm Billy V for This Is Now. Thank you, Billy, and so good to see Paula and great to hear that things are picking up again at Iolani Palace. This is a live look now towards the west side. You can see the tar cam bouncing a little bit out there. Yeah, some winds out there. Let's check out on your forecast. Here's Guy Hagi. How's it on this Thursday? Trade winds will be picking up speed today, holding firm into the weekend. That means some of this upstream moisture will be pushing into windward sides. Occasional showers will come through, but we're not expecting significant rainfall anytime soon. And those high clouds kind of drifting up and over the state, likely leaving to the west today. There are those winds, especially windy from Maui to Kauai. Lighter winds, of course, for the corner side of the Big Island, although they got some brisk corner winds right now. So we are in for a typical trade wind weather day. A few showers for windward sides, drier conditions for leeward sides, high temperatures running to near 90. And the, with all the sunshine, that UV index will be extreme. And heads up, box jellyfish still swimming into south and southwest shores. Should be gone by tomorrow, but check with lifeguards just to be sure. A small increase is due into south and southeast shores today. And the east shores will be picking up because of the strengthening trade winds, picking up that uh, trade wind swell. So we've got nice steady trade winds running a little bit windier tomorrow all the way through Sunday. And then starting late Sunday until Monday and Tuesday, the winds will back off. Keep it here on Hawaii News Now. We'll have all your severe weather updates. Maui's government leaders are launching a task force to combat the growing population of feral deer. Council member Yuki Le Sugimura is spearheading the initiative with plans to bring in the Maui Farm Bureau, ranchers, veterinarians, and hunters. The deer have been a nuisance for food, leading them to people's homes and farms. All righty, and uh, we have some interesting news from the feed. Want to tell you about a story we found online earlier today. A paddleboarder that got up close and personal to a whale in Argentina. This drone video captured a southern right whale seemingly playing with a woman on a paddleboard. Oh, my gosh. Oh, wow. It pushes the board gently forward, <laughs> observing its movement and swims directly beneath. The southern right whale can be found in southern parts of South America, South Africa, as well as Australia, New Zealand. The area's tourism secretary says more than 1,600 whales have come near the city shore so far. Whale watching season, by the way, runs through May, 
and December. That was incredible It'd video. Be terrifying. I would be freaking <laughs> out. Yep. Britney Spears will not be charged after being accused of battery by a housekeeper last month. So officials in Ventura County said the investigation found insufficient evidence that a crime occurred. A complaint was filed against the 39-year-old pop star saying Spears slapped the housekeeper's cell phone out of her hands. Oh. The sheriff's office said there was no injury to the housekeeper or significant damage to the phone. Now, Spears' lawyer called the accusation sensational tabloid fodder. Poor Brittany. She's mm -hmm. never, there's always something, it mm -hmm. sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, it's news that I have always wondered about, and I'm sure you may have as well. If you're a fast food connoisseur, you might wonder why sometimes it seems like the McFlurry machine's always down at McDonald's. The well, worst. Yeah, it's like always, or the frozen Coke at Burger King. <laughs> well, now the feds want to get to the bottom of it. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission reportedly reached out to Mickey D's to see what's up with the soft serve machines. Owners have said the machines are overly complicated. They require a nightly cleaning mm. uh, that has to involve heat to kill the bacteria. And that can last several hours. If the cleaning cycle fails, the machines are unusable. Tool repair technician can come and fix it. The fast food giant says they have dedicated a team to solve the problem. They will also implement new training procedures to make sure it happens, I guess, less frequently. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I deal with a lot because <laughs> yeah. McFlurries are one of the only few things I eat at McDonald's. Joys in life. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's time for some good news, you guys. A Kauai-based impact investment hub is helping Hawaii entrepreneurs grow their business, and it's using food as the common denominator. Here's Jim Mendoza. Kauai company Common Ground focuses all of its business efforts on food. It calls it the great connector. We also believe that the systems that feed us can and should be improved. The company helps small businesses that produce locally grown food and beverage products. One of the things that Common Ground does is really serve as a petri dish to demonstrate how we can improve the systems that feed us. What does that look like in practice and what does that mean? Common Ground so takes the companies through a business development flavors. program. These two are our flagship flavors. Toast Roasted, macnut, and raw. Tiny Isle and Slow Island Food and Beverage Company just completed the Accelerator Training Course that includes a capital component. So we actually invest into these companies and become part of their team for, um, for the long haul. Ten other businesses are in its incubator program, and an online marketplace features dozens of local products from reef-safe sunscreens to coffee. All the growers and makers practice regenerative farming methods. The way and the types of plants that are planted in the farm provide all the nutrients necessary for the soil. Um, and it's akin to a food forest, essentially. Common Ground sits on 83 acres, site of the old Kilauea sugar plantation and the guava kai plantation. The company has its own farm and a store, and it's adding more. As soon as the campus opens up, uh, that will also involve our restaurant, which will feature uh, many of these products and also produce from our own farm and others in the area. Common Ground just started three years ago. It's constantly searching for other products and producers, and even during COVID, it's managed to keep growing. Jim Mendoza, Hawaii News Now. That's Thank you, Jim. Great idea yeah. there. Always good things happening on the Garden Isle, right, Ash? Yep. Yeah, we thank Jim <laughs> for that story. Well, thank you so much for bearing with us, too, uh, as I'm filling in for Jonathan for the next few days, having a good time here in the Digital Center. Uh, always appreciate uh, working with Ash and bringing you the very latest. Of course, um, you can always find the latest on air, online, and all of our digital streams.